So here we are, 8.6, the laws of sines and cosines, okay? Um, two major laws that you, you use for triangles that are not right triangles. Everything you've done so far is right angle triangles, so it's Pythagoras, sine, cosine, or tangent. Today you're going to be using two laws um, for angles that are not, or triangles that are not 90 degrees. So, example type of one, the law of signs. So, first and foremost, the notation. As you can see, that the angles, capital letters, is directly opposite the side, lowercase. They must be opposite each other in order for you to be able to put them um, into a ratio of, of sorts, okay? Um, and as you can see, the sine of angle A is opposite the side A. And that equals the sine of angle B um, divided by the side B and finally equals to sine C over little c, the side of C. So as you can see, what you're going to get is ratio and proportion. You will prove one proportion. Okay, so here's example one um, using the fact that it's a triangle with AAS and as you will notice from the fact that angle A is 97 degrees, it's not a right angle. So let's have a look at, and so um, AAS, we're back to chapter four, angle, angle, side. So you've got angle A and you've got side A, you've got angle C, you need to find side C. So as you can see from this line here, um, you don't need sine B over B, you're making a ratio and proportion. So these are the two sides and angles that you need, so you, that's the what you quote. The second line in, you substitute in, so you know it's sine 97 opposite 16, and it's sine 21 opposite X. Cross multiply and solve. And again, make sure you read the statement first, depending on what sort of um, degree of accuracy. In this case, it's doesn't ask for that so 5.8 to one decimal place is sufficient for what you need okay typical type of exam question here all right um, so this is example two the law of signs you in using asa so angle side angle and again round to the nearest tenth but look at the state look at the question first of all they're not using abc so don't worry about that it's sine a over a etc okay what have you been given? You've been given angle H. It's 45 degrees. You need to find X. So you've got an angle and opposite side. Okay, but, um, but you can't, you've got angle 73, which is J, but you don't need little J because you don't know how to solve for that side. Okay, but you have got side little K, but you need to find angle K. And as it says here from the angle sum theorem, all you've got to do is add together the 45 and 73, subtract it from 180. So now you know that angle K is 62 degrees. Okay, so you've got to find that in order to find your other part of ratio and proportion. And as you can see, you're now using the angles H and K and the sides H and K. So now you've got your ratio and proportion substitute in and solve okay so question number one no letters but you can put your own letters in um, i'm just going to go a b c it doesn't matter so this is little a this is little b and this is little c um, and as you notice straight away we don't need little c so it's going to be sine of the angle a over side a equals sine b over little b so if we go now you've got sine 35 degrees over a must equal sine 58 over 9 okay and don't forget the nearest tenth so if you cross multiply and do all that you get x is equal to 6.1 so as you can see, here's, here's um, section two, but example three, the law of cosines now, okay? When the law of sines cannot be used, so that's always the best first place. 
If it cannot be used now, you can use the law of signs. Well, if you have a look at example three, why can you not use the law of signs? Well, look at what they've given you for a start. They've given you one angle. Uh, you don't know the other two angles, so they've given you two sides and one angle. You can't find um, A, the other two angles, because you don't know where, what they are. And because it's not a right angle triangle, you can't find A, B. So this is a law of cosines question. All right, here's the theorem for the laws of cosine. And as you can see, it's Pythagoras in theory. So a squared equals b squared plus c squared minus two times whatever bc is times by cos a, all right? And obviously that can be rotated. b squared is a squared plus c squared minus 2ac cos b. In other words, look at what you've got. So whatever the side you are finding, which is a, the last part, it will be the cos of the angle. So the side and the angle go at the end, okay? What you've been given goes in the middle two sections. Um, it's one of those things that, as you know, I often say, it's a number cruncher. So make sure that you do a lot of number crunching. Um, so always quote the formula. Second line, substitute in. Third line, simplify. The fourth line, do your work, and then eventually you're going to come up with your answer. Okay, so here's the law of cosines with a triangle with side, side, side. In other words, you're given three sides. All right, so in other words, it's the same formula. Okay, um, whatever you are finding or whatever you're given must be the first or the last part of, of the um, equation. All right. Well, you are looking for the missing angle. So now your missing angle is the cos at the end, and it must be opposite. So whatever we finish with, we must start with. So it must be your opposite side, which is your 8. Okay? Um, you've given all the, the other sides. You are given side little q. You're given side little p. So substitute it in. Okay? Um, solve and simplify as best as you can. Okay, now don't forget, negative 36 is multiplying cos 36. It's not just 45 subtract 36 at all. It's 45 subtract the multiple of 35 cos x. Okay, so as you can see, from here to here, as it says here, they're subtracting the 45. You're getting rid of the 45, 64, subtract 45, it's giving you 19. These guys here are a multiplier, so you're going to divide, which is this section here, and that will give you the cos. And don't forget, when you're finding an angle, you use the inverse button. Okay, so now you've got a cosine ratio now, okay, opposite over the adjacent, etc., and you finish up with 122. Is that a reasonable answer? Well, let's have a look. You know that 122 is greater than 90, so it must be the greatest angle. And if you look at the triangle 368, um, it's directly opposite. So the biggest angle must be across from the biggest side. So is it reasonable? Yes. Is it the correct answer? Well, only time will tell, but at least it's a reasonable answer. Okay, so now we've got the cosine rule. Um, again, we've got no labels, so just label them, A, B, C. It's entirely up to you, it doesn't matter. So this is little a, little b, and little c. Okay, quote the formula. Well, we want little a. So it's going to be a squared equals b squared plus c squared minus two times the uh, size that you've been given, b, c, and cosine the angle that you've got, 18 degrees. Okay, so there's the formula, so plug it in. So a squared is going to equal b squared is 7 squared plus 14.7 squared minus 2 times, and I put these in parentheses now, the 7, the 14.5, and the cos 18 degrees. Do the math, so a squared is going to equal the 49 plus 210.25, and don't simplify it this time, even though it says to the nearest tenth, minus um, 2 times 7 times 14.5 is 203, and you're going to multiply that by cos of 18, 
Okay, so now we're just going to number crunch and come up with what a squared is. So a squared is going to be 66.1855. Still do not simplify yet. And then the square root of that is going to give you 8.3. to the nearest tenth.